Welcome to the Homeschool Together podcast. Where one working mom and a stay-at-home dad help you navigate the nuts and bolts of the growing and dynamic world of homeschooling. With a focus on early learners. Like me! All the ins and outs of building and maintaining your homeschool life. Homeschool! Find out tips and tricks to make things like this easier. I'm reading! And ultimately, enjoy educating your kids. And what's that last thing? Have fun together! Did I do good, Daddy? (laughs) Yeah, you did, sweetie. Good job. Hello and welcome back to Homeschool Together. Thank you so much for joining us. It's a beautiful sunny day here in the Pacific Northwest in the fall. And which is very shocking, you may hear the lawnmowers running in the distance. I hope that doesn't bother and try to remove as much as I possibly can. Um, If you have a chance, head on to the show notes to support our podcast. There's a ton of links there as well as our YouTube channel, which we are actively throwing out videos as quickly as we can make them um, on our ancient history um, tour to time. It's been a lot of fun. We are about a quarter of a third of the way through the whole ancient history study. It's mm-hmm. been a lot of fun and hope you guys can check that out over there. That is through the build your library curriculum. If you guys are following along today, we're going to do one of our first potpourri episodes as we promised we would do once we got rid of our little, um, short bites that we always do on Thursdays. We have made the choice to put together a little bit of a kind of a potpourri today. We're going to talk a little bit about a book that we like, um, a new website, kind of a fun activity for for art and uh, and enjoyment there, as well as a curriculum review, one of the big ones that we have just recently finished. We're going to kind of talk about, you know, all about reading level two and kind of where we're going to go from here and kind of what is the roadmap and how we've been doing on our learning to read journey with our now newly minted eight-year-old. Hmm. Yes, yep, she's no I longer. Can't believe it. She's no longer the seven-year-old. She is now <laughs> the eight-year-old. So we have finished all about reading level two. Mm-hmm. Um, it did not take as long as all about reading level one, which is a nice. No, we have learned a lot. I think going through this, yes. we have done a lot of interviews. We luckily, we were lucky enough to actually get an interview with the all about reading folks. And that was a yeah, lot of. That was really. That great. was really helpful. We've actually talked a lot about kind of our reading from this year. This year has been the big year. Mm-hmm. I'm, we've we have been told that I. I still remember, I know there's some people listening that might have those kindergartners that are just starting or maybe have like a, um, a struggling early reader. Um, we had, we were there, man, we were in your shoes two and a half years ago, just wondering, you know, banging our heads against the table going, how do we do this? How, Mm -hmm. how is this magic done? I I taught this kid how to walk. I taught him how to potty train. I taught him how to speak. I did all these things, but man, the reading one's hard. It's a tough one. Mm -hmm. And it was tough there. And, and we are now, I think we are through that. Not as much of like hitting the ground running as you would think, um, but she is now reading and pulling books down and taking the effort. Like, for example, um, a good example of this would be she just read the, um, which one was it? It was the the Mummies version of the Magic Treehouse book, but it was the graphic novel version. Right. The graphic novels. Graphic novels are just such a great way to get your kids interested in something. For our daughter, she really... Um, has listened to so many audiobooks that she really loves super complex stories. Mm -hmm. And so for us to say, okay, well, you know, here's an early reader book that's like a level two reader or something. And she's like, this is just not a very interesting story. So one of the great things about graphic novels is that we can give an elevated story with a lower word count. And it doesn't always mean that the words are all super simple, but because it's a magic treehouse, the words aren't that complex. So we found that those are really great there. I think this was almost a a one-to-one translation of the book yeah it's really close i mean yeah. you, you don't have to do jack said annie said or jack any said. of the additional descriptions it's really just visual you know visual drawings and a bunch of dialogue i think they only have them for like the first five or yeah. six magic treehouse books so they don't have it for a, a lot of them but that was really fun but we found other popular books like i know you found the first artemis fowl book has got mm-hmm. a graphic novel we even grabbed graphic novels for the series of the wings um, of fire the wings of fire right those um, are a little bit more challenging so if you're trying to put them those on, are denser if you're Much trying denser. to grade them the wings of fire are a little bit more difficult to read than the magic treehouse oh well, um, quite a bit more difficult quite a, quite a bit more so if you're trying to figure out which one to do i would say the magic treehouse one seems to be at a lower level yeah it's i think it's a good place to start if you're finding that your child is beyond kind of the ready to read series of books that you know they're just finding those stories not as interesting but they're not really ready to start a a 
like reading a, ch- a full chapter book like Magic Treehouse or Kingdom of Renly or one of those early mm-hmm. ones. And that's kind of where we're at. Like our daughter's not ready to read a chapter book, yeah. but she's not really at the ready to read level either. Some very early graphic novels and the Magic Treehouse graphic novels have just really been a great, a great fit. Unfortunately, there's only a couple of them. Yeah, yeah. I think they're, as always, they're probably just rolling them out slowly over time. So that's kind of where where she is with her reading. She, I think the we, we've talked about in the past, kind of the gateway book that really got her really moving this past summer was the, it was like a compendium of Pete the Cat stories. Um, Pete the Cat kind of early readers are these kind of short stories that are, I don't know, very simple to read, very, yeah, very straightforward. they're kind of silly. And I think the silly nature for her, yeah. the fact that it wasn't a complex story, it still worked because they were they were funny enough that yeah. she was like, and, okay, yeah. she was still into it. He's got kind of like a Garfield feel to him. A yeah, little a bit, little bit. A little, little bit to him. He's kind of like a always- A little sarcastic. He's like sarcastic and bumming all the time. And he's not, you know, he's doing things, but he's not really into him. You know, that type of funny thing. So it was funny, like that was the book that got her going. Yeah. And yeah. that was the one, that was the first one where we just saw her sitting down on the couch reading mm-hmm. the book. And I'm Absolutely. like, oh, are you just looking at the pictures? She goes, oh, no, I'm, I read them all. And I'm like, wow, okay, this is great. This is actually starting to happen. And this goes in line with the curriculum that we're talking about where the All About Reading Curriculum Level 2, what we have been, what we have heard from people who have taken their kids through this curriculum. So once you get to the end of Level 2, that's kind of when the magic starts to right. happen. And yeah. we're like, oh, okay, so we started Level 2 and... We were getting through it and it was still like level one, but moving a little bit quicker because she's more mature, Mm -hmm. willing to do the work, you know, willing to, you know, take the time. It's not much of a kindergartner who will fight you a little bit more at the second grade. You know, now she's kind of at the second grade level. She's willing to do the the exercises and do do the things. And she, she made it straight on through and all of a sudden started picking up books, started getting interested in what, what she was reading. The readers went a lot better. The lessons went a lot smoother. I mean, it, um, so basically here, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the stats. All about reading level two is about 56, 57 lessons. And they're basically split half and half. Half of them are conceptual lessons and half of them are the reader and the story. So if you know the all about reading curriculum, you're going to get essentially a teacher's manual that's going to walk you through all the lessons. And this will give you you know, tell you how to, how to, you know, teach the concept, how to use the, the manipulatives, whether it's the magnetic letter tiles or the, the word cards or the, uh, the phoneme cards or whatever it might be, as well as the activity, they'll walk you through the lesson. A lot of times the lessons will be broken up into maybe three or four sections. Um, they come with uh, sheets of pages for, uh, literacy. So you can practice your words and you can practice, you know, whatever the, you know, the concept that you're doing for that week. Um, and that, that's basically a lesson. That's a big lesson. And, and based on how fast you, and how, you know, what the focus is around your child, you could do one of these lessons in maybe three days or so, if you broke it up into pieces, I found that I was able to do it at kind of like a two day clip. We kind of broke it in half. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we would do like, if we approached a lesson and I'll, you know, I always like to do an example lesson here. So I'll do number, uh, lesson 14 in the book here. I got it right in front of me. Um, the first job of silent E. So the silent E was a big kind of recurring theme through, through this lesson, you know, introducing more phonemes, but introducing the silent E cause that opens up so many words to her, you know, ability to read. And, and what's important about that too is, is it's where she has to start to shift between long vowels and short vowels and have to be able to do that on the fly. And that's, uh, you know, a little bit of a visual trick she had to learn. And so I, I know all the all the learners have to do this, right? And be able to, you know, flip between the the long vowel, short vowel. So they started introducing that here in the book. I think about a quarter of the way through, you start to do that. And then that carries through, you know, extensively through most of the book. Um, and then you start towards the end of it, you start to get into um, kind of vowel pairings and different sounds like OW and OI and those type of those pairings that you, that you tend to see. But for example, for the first job of silent E, you're going to walk through using the letter tiles. And, and this was funny. We had a smaller magnetic board to start. And because you start introducing so many letter pairings, like all the ER, IR, OR, and the, all of a sudden your board gets really filled up with a lot of these magnetic tiles. So we had to actually upgrade to the one that's right behind you. <laughs> <It was> a, lot, <laughs> yeah. a lot bigger board. So 
Essentially, they a also do have an app for those they folks do. that want to keep it smaller or who yeah. just tend to lose letter tiles. I can't tell you the number of times we've lost the letter tiles and had to find them. And I've been worried they were going like, to fall down end, the vents or it's something. It's funny where you end up finding them. <laughs> right. So if, if you want, I think it's a $20 app that you can do. Mm -hmm. And then you can you can have it if your yeah, kids respond on, okay to especially that. Especially if you're on the go. Um, yeah. That's another thing. It can as be well. a really interesting way to go. So basically, in like for example, this lesson, they will introduce the silent E concept. So they'll do mad and made. Great, you know, great word pairing there to show you exactly how to how to teach this concept. And so they show you visually how to move the letters in, move the letters out. So and they're walking you through in kind of a scripted format um, for you who may not you know, be all about reading families. Um, and then what they're gonna do is they're gonna introduce additional words like dime or dim, right? And you'll be able to play those two words and have your student, you know, work through the feeling of switching the long and short vowels. They'll, they'll, they'll give you a couple, they'll give you hop and hope. And then they run you through about six or seven of those. And that, so you, you spend a little bit of time just manipulating the letter tiles, have your learner do that, working on blending those sounds, using their finger to move through it. Some, some readers may be beyond that. Mine was starting to get beyond using her finger. She just wanted to look at it and read it. So some of the old techniques kind of drop away and making room for the new techniques, whatever those might be. And then very often there's an activity. And then this, in this um, lesson, there were two activities. One of them was um, taking words that have uh, the short vowel sound, like a hop, and then putting it in front of, you know, essentially putting it onto the paper. And now there's an E at the end. You have to then, you know, read the word as the new, the new format. So there's like a nice little manipulative activity. And these are paper craft so you got to cut them out and everything and then there was another one where it was um kit versus kite and they had some different word pairings so there were two activities that you had to do as well as the loose cards which are kind of your vocabulary cards for the week and these are things that you can use anytime you want i, I, I always like to keep them as like bookmarks in the page so when we start our lesson i give her the new cards after she's learned the concept and then we close with the cards as well. And then when I come back to the lesson later in the week, you know, a couple of days later, I'll open with the cards and I'll close with the cards as well. And these are just your green cards, standard, you know, list of words. And I think this this week, it was, you know, for this lesson, it was eight, bite, made. And there were a few others as well. And again, you just rapid fire through them, get your reader kind of warmed up or close out the learning for the day, whatever the concept might be. And then at the very, very, very end, they have a sheet, which is practicing your fluency. So it's taking the green cards that you already have and then adding in another 20 or 30 words. So you can imagine inside your head, you're teaching a concept, you're doing a couple activities, you have these vocabulary cards, and sometimes they may have a, a like a leap word, they call it a leap word or a sight word that they have to learn for that day. Sometimes they're corresponding to the concept you're learning right now or it's some new word like they or something that, that you need to introduce. And the reason why that's important is because the following lesson will incorporate that into the reading because the reader will then incorporate not only the sight word that you've just learned, but also the concept that you have. And so you can imagine like three or four different elements in each, each of these main lessons. And that's how a lesson is structured. And then sometimes they change here and there. Sometimes it's just one activity. It might be two activities. Sometimes the fluency sheets have two fluency sheets, so there's a lot more words to read. Obviously, you know, it scales from lesson to lesson. Every lesson has this conceptual center and is immediately followed with the reader. And I found as we moved through the curriculum, as my daughter was doing more reading on her own, I felt like the two lessons kind of blended together. So like, for example, this is lesson 14. Lesson 15 would be reading um, a short story in one of the readers. Um, I think, it, I think it was. And then, so I would, I would immediately have that be her practice at the end of the day. Like, Hey, let's read the story together. And we would go ahead and do our reading and, and have her do that. So it really started to move quicker than it had before. And I felt like her reading and her, her tools and her tool belt were really expanding. And I felt that she was beginning to kind of get it better. Like, you know, now that she's getting all these tools and, and you're learning how to you know say these new words and she's seen these letter combos or new phonemes or whatever it might be she's getting more and more confidence i did find that about halfway through the entire level two i found that she was be having a little bit of anxiety reading you know out loud in front of me as if mm -hmm. i'm like watching her like a hawk so i actually started sending her away a little bit more and i said hey 
why don't you go read it to yourself on the couch? And she would go and read it. And I would pre-read the story. And I would say, okay, great. She'd come back and say, oh, daddy, I read the whole story. I go, wow, that's great. What did, what happened in the story? And I've read it, so I know what's going on. And I said, oh, you know, do you know, did the dog do this? And he goes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then why did he want to do that? Oh, it's because this girl was doing this thing. So I was able to extract out that she had, you know, her comprehension was was holding. Very often on the reader stories, I would ask her to go read it about two or three times over the course of the week. So we were able to do essentially two lessons a week. We start the day, the week with the concept on say like on a Tuesday, on a Monday, Tuesday, we would do the concept. On Wednesday, I would ask her to start the reader and we then we would do the activity that's associated with the reader. In the reader lesson, there's very often um, some activity that you have to do and some more fluency. So I would start bringing that in. On Thursday, we would kind of review the concept from the previous lesson and then I'd have her read the short story again. And then on that Friday or on that Saturday, I'd ask her to read the story again. And towards the end of that week, I would then bring her to the table and I'd say, hey, can you, I'd randomly pick a page. Can you read me this page? And she would go ahead and read it. And she did a really good job because she had read it three or four times. She had done it in a comfortable manner. She wasn't stressed. And then I would go to another random page and say, oh, can you read me this page? She goes, dad, if you just want me to read the story, let me read the story. And all of a sudden (laughs) she's reading two or three pages to me and she's doing it, you know, you know, without, without losing track without slowing down without dropping words she started sight reading a lot better and i I started to see this evolution so if you're at home and you're trying to think about you know getting your kid to read a little bit more maybe having them send them away to go sit on the couch and read quietly to themselves maybe a nice little technique that you can pull in we like having her read to the dog she's really fond of that as well it's like oh i think that zoe needs this story (laughs) go read to her you know we send her off to read to the dog so that works i think the proof has really been in the pudding we were we were already very positive about all about reading Mm -hmm. level one uh, even though we did struggle a bit with it and we thought well we probably started just a little bit too early and we kind of got in our groove with it but i think that this one really has been something that hasn't been a a struggle for our daughter. It hasn't been something that she's, you know, resisted and fought against kind of Mm -hmm. the way that she did initially with the first level, because I think that was a big challenge for her. So definitely the techniques that they're teaching have really worked. The activities that they have, it it has all been successful. And I think we're seeing the proof in the pudding that she wants to read books on her own. Mm -hmm. She does... When we're out and about, she's reading signs. Mm-hmm. She's she started reading my text messages. Yeah. So as I'm sitting there texting at the table, uh, which I know I probably shouldn't do, she's able to read that. So, yeah, you, you know, it's really coming out that I think we're settling into a place where reading is just another subject. And it's not this kind of big like, oh, it's reading time and it's a, it's a, a challenging fighting kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think overall, we're really positive yeah, about so, all about reading. So level two is the green books. If you're following along by the colors, it comes with two readers. The first one is uh, What Am I is the first reader. And the second one is Queen Bee. Um, I thought the readers were a lot better on this go around. They're a lot more complex. The sto- right. I mean, the, the sto- stories are better because they have more words yeah, to choose sto- from. That's and the, the stories hard. are a lot better. And they're actually... Towards, towards, I think the second book, they got funny. They got um, very silly. And uh, there was one yeah. of one of the ones we read about was like a whale on a boat that, and there was this crab and a starfish and they, they hitched a ride on like a fishing boat in the ocean. And it was very silly and funny. I thought the stories were a lot more enjoyable. I found her laughing at them sometimes. Mm-hmm. I felt her like just reading them. She goes, oh, I'm going to read the story again. Like she, she actually picked up the book to read the story so it's, yeah. it was a lot better. Um, it's been a really good, enjoyable experience. We had it in a nice binder. We got this used from a mom. Whoever the mom is, is you're amazing because she cut out everything. She put them in these little binder. Uh, yeah, binder. we're going to do a video on this one so we can show this yeah. because this is definitely the way to use this with multiple kids if you're going to oh, be using absolutely. with another. Like you it, can cut up already, the activity It's already book. ready to go. Like, yep, you can put everything in sleeves. And we, we did just buy the next level um, of All About Reading and we're going to do this with that and make sure yeah. that it's all done this way because it's just so easy to use it for the next child. And then, you know, we can kind of keep that going. Absolutely. And, and if you are thinking about 
a way to support the podcast. We do have an affiliate link for the All About Reading curriculum, and I'll put that in the show notes. If yeah. you're thinking about buying it, um, you which, you can only buy it from them, from really, them. Uh, yeah. unless you wanted to buy it uh, from uh, some someone else used. Um, yeah. So do, yeah, we do get a little. It's it's no no extra money to you. It's just a little bit of a kickback to us. So yeah, helps keep things going. Keeps so. the lights on. So yeah, we we've been very happy. So where are we going from here? So what we're actually going to do is we're going to step back. And we're going to mm-hmm. go ahead and uh, rip through the all about spelling level one. And I think my daughter's yeah. r- very ready for that. And I think it's actually right. going to be fairly easy for her. So I think we're going to move pretty quick. Yeah, you're supposed to start all about spelling one anytime after you've finished all about reading one. Yeah. But, you know, the very first level was a little bit challenging for us. And we were like, I don't really want to add reading and spelling at the same time. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you thought like this is a good time. We'll just kind of Take see if we can break. jump into yeah. spelling now and kind of breeze through that. So she has gotten a, lot of, excited about a that. lot of writing and spelling activity from the um, Explode the Code work that we've been doing um, Mm -hmm. on both our travels and our kind of review periods in between levels. So we're going to spend the next maybe two or three months doing the All About Spelling I'm going to go yep, as, and just reading a lot and of read a bunch of a bunch of books. And I think we're just going to kind of take it easy. And I think maybe at the end of the year, maybe the beginning of the next year, we're going to go ahead and start all about uh, uh, reading level t- uh, three. Yeah, we might also do some explode the code worksheets because yeah. those are just a, a really and, independent yeah. thing for her to do yep. that doesn't need a lot of interaction. So especially with her sister starting to do her own little curriculum, it's nice to give something to the big kid um, to go off and do. Yeah, we're starting to really do that juggle. So, yep. yep, So this is our review of all about reading level two. And we'll try to get a video up sometime here in the next few weeks. So you all can see this. Absolutely. This this was a good run. Um, I had a good experience with this. Um, It was more enjoyable this second time around Mm -hmm. uh, as as the first one. I do see if you are moving at a pretty good clip, um, you know, two lessons a week was not a hardship for us. And if you think about that, you can do a, a curriculum in a you know, half a year at that pace um, so, or maybe yeah. have a couple of weeks off here and there. But it could easily spread seven, eight months and you have a few months to do other, other review or the spelling curriculum or whatever you deem necessary or just keep on going on, on the levels. We were pretty happy with that. Yeah, it's nice, too, to be able. We, we do this with math, too, where yeah. we we combo right start yep. with Math Mammoth and we combo this with Explode the Code and, mm-hmm. and Beyond the Code. And I think it's nice to kind of hit things in two different ways. With both of those options, we have a really parent intensive portion of yep. our year. And then we can either finish that in its entirety or stop, you know, kind of halfway mm-hmm. and then jump into the more independent section. And if we time it right, we get the more independent of one where we have the more teacher intensive of the other yeah, so we can, can swap be them, yeah, yeah doing right start at the same time we're doing explode the code and then when we're doing all about reading we're doing math mammoth to just kind of balance it a little bit um maybe we're overachievers and that we're moving a little bit faster but we really feel that with both math and reading if we don't you know, hit it every day, then we really get a lot of sliding and yeah. and it's best for our daughter to just kind of be, you know, doing it each day as kind of a normal, normal course. It's, so you know, like, that, like, that works out nicely for our family. It's like fitness, like working out for her. She needs to not only see it multiple times, she needs to do it almost every day. So it's, it's kind of a thing for her. Mm-hmm. I don't know if her sister is going to be like that. I, I'm, I'm interested to know, how, you know, how that's going to change. Maybe she's not going to be, want to be a review kid. She has a little bit better, like she has the ability to memorize or just see it and remember it yeah that her sister never had that ability but she'll hit a wall too like at some point uh, something like everything that. is easy until you like you hit everyone well, has a different you know subjects that funny. they're good in yeah. or levels that they'll hit but you know it'll it'll happen for her too yeah i mean i've seen that a little bit on the math i'm, I'm starting to see her you know starting to run up some things that are a little bit difficult and right it does, it's not running as easy as it was before so. she's very sharp though and she is yeah. absolutely listening to everything that's going on with her sister absolutely and uh today she was copying she was copying the the words on the side of the scooby-doo van the mystery <laughs> machine and as she was copying the letters she was making all the letter sounds yeah and she's four I know. So, so i was like a little bit quicker than okay sister, yeah. well i guess this may <laughs> well, but maybe math won't come as easier to her as it did for our older so you know it, they're all different they're and all different. i'm excited to see the challenges of having two and going through the same curriculum with a different kid we've yeah. already kind of experienced that a little bit we did the blossom and root early years volume two um our you know our older daughter really just loved the kind of slow pace and listen yeah. to classical music and and all that that stuff and uh, you know our younger daughter just wanted more she just wanted more academic that just wasn't enough for her she yeah. was ready 
for a higher level. And so we think we're going to go ahead and get her started probably in Torchlight Pre-K because yeah. I love all the social emotional learning stuff that's in there. So, um, yeah, every kid's different. And I think it's interesting to, yeah. to see. But overall, we're really happy with this yeah. program. Going to continue um, on. I think it's the most comprehensive reading program we could do. Um, and and I'm, ha- I'm happy we have this kind of basis for our daughter to start reading. Absolutely. So, so let's move yeah. on to... So for, that was a part one. Part of one our of the potpourri. Potpourri episode. That's, that's the kind of the... The, the, the cedar smell. Now we're going to get a little bit into lavender smell now. Um, you're ruffling it in the bathroom because, you know, whatever. Um, we're going to review a little book. Yes. It's, it's called This Is My Home, This Is My School by Jonathan Bean. And it is an awesome picture book all about a homeschool family. Yep. And it's about a, a child who's showing you, they're like, this is my classroom. And this, and this, and it's yeah. all the different rooms of the house. You know, this is my cafeteria and it's kitchen. And sometimes my teacher has a lot of energy. And sometimes my teacher gets really tired at showing the mom <laughs> and all these kind of crazy situations. This is my school bus and it's like the family van. Right. <laughs> you know, and it takes us to all these places. And um, this is my sub and it's the dad, you know, yeah, and sometimes yeah. we do phys ed. And, and it's, it's drawing these parallels between school and homeschool. Yeah. In all these really unique and wonderful ways, and written by a homeschooler, and in the in the back of the book, he's got pictures of his family and his life growing up, um, and so we just really loved it. There aren't that many books that feature homeschoolers. Yeah. Um, sometimes there are, there is that Greetings from Somewhere series that mm-hmm. is uh, talked about in Torchlight K. That that's a pair of homeschooled kids, but they're really homeschooled because they're on this world trip with their parents. Yeah. They weren't homeschooled before that, so it, it was kind of like. Um, like homeschool out of necessity, which yeah. was still great. I still love that they're that they're there. But this book is specifically to showcase, you know, a how family, yeah, a family what... and what their life is like and how great their their homeschool is. So it definitely really spoke to our kids. It's I think Amazon says the reading age is like four to seven. It's very early. It's just lots of pictures. Our our eight year old though loved it. Yeah. And I read it, it to the little one as well. She really, she liked it too. Yeah. So if you want a really cool book to get for a birthday or Christmas or whatever, or a gift for another homeschool family, yeah. this would be a great option. We just, we loved it so much. We wanted to spend some time talking about it because there's so few books that are all about are. homeschool yeah. uh, and for our kids funny to see it, the parallels. It, it was in the uh, list, you know, the ancient history uh, basket. And I'm like, what is this? And you're like, oh, I saw it on. You yeah. Know, I, I picked it up because I, I heard great things about it. And so anyway, there's there's a link in the show notes. You guys can check it out. But we thought it was a terrific book and that you all would really enjoy it. Um, the next thing that we're going to talk a little bit about it was something that I discovered the other day. I was at the, gosh, where was it? I was at dance class and I had my older one sitting there and she was a little bored. We had just finished our reading lesson and there's nothing going on. And I said, huh, I wonder if there's like a drawing app that I can get on my phone mm-hmm. real quick. And I went ahead and Googled something. I said, hell, you know, I bet you there's like a simple little web page. Somebody could just like scratch stuff on. And I went and, hit and clicked a draw into Google search. And the, one of the first things that came up was this game that is sponsored or supported by Google called Quick Draw with Google. And it's essentially a game. And I know what they're doing. They're, they gave you a game. But what they're doing is they're, they're training an AI underneath it. So if you if you don't want to be the little, you know, the camel for the AI carrying, you know, the teaching along with it, you don't have to play this. But it's a very fun little game. And what it is is you're going to get eight challenges and they're going to challenge you with like a, um, a, cha- like a, a, a task. R- draw a, a car and you go ahead and hit start and it gives you like 20 or 30 seconds to you know, draw this car and you, you're using your finger on the, on, you can use it on your phone. You can use it on, you know, a tablet. You can even do it on a PC as well, or, you know, a, on a laptop or a desktop. And it does, it's not an app. It's just a web page. And as you're drawing it down below, the AI is trying to guess what you're drawing. So as you're playing it, like you could draw the car, you could see the wheels. And many times before you even finish your drawing, it's already guessed that it's a car. And then immediately what happens is a new window pops up and says, okay, Here's your next challenge. Draw a toothbrush. And then it puts you into the, the editor. And so you start drawing the toothbrush and and it's and down at the bottom, it's guessing. It's a it's a spoon, it's a fork, it's a blow, it's a toothbrush. And then it goes ahead and you know, gives you the next challenge. And I think it gives you about eight of them. And once you've completed the entire challenge, they show you all the pictures you've drawn and how it guessed um, on each one of those images. So if it got the image. It, you know, you get points for that. But if, if you couldn't get it, like if you draw a cake or something like that, and it looks just look like a book or something like that, and it couldn't get it. <laughs> and, uh, you, you know, you don't get points for that one. So your goal is to try to draw a compelling image that the AI can guess and everything. So 
it's a cute little game. My daughter played it for almost 10 or 15 minutes. She eventually just like walked away with my phone and was playing um, the game. But it was a really, really fun. It was a great way to kill a few minutes. And, you know, if you're sitting there and you're stuck in a, in a situation, if you're at a, I don't know, you know, a restaurant or something like that, and the kids are bouncing off the walls, you guys can play this type of game and, and have a lot of fun and, and whatnot. And I, I even sent it to you. And while you were at work that one day and you're like, oh my gosh, you, you should not have sent this to me. It's so addictive. Um, but it's a ton of little fun. Um, and I'll go ahead and put the link down below. What's really cool about it. It's not an app. You don't have to download anything. It's just a web page. Go ahead and go to it and you play the game. I, I, it's we had so a lot of, addictive. It's a you lot guys, of fun. You I, guys, I had played so many rounds before. <laughs> Are you playing one right now? <laughs> it, it's so addictive. He sent it to me at work. And he was like, you got to check this out. And I was like, oh, I'll just open this. And I was like, all of a sudden I looked by. I'm like, oh my gosh, I've been on here for 10 minutes. I got to get off. <laughs> I'm at work. <laughs> Stop. Yeah, it was, it was a fun little game. I really liked it. I, I thought it was a nice little addition. I've pulled it out a few times for the older one to play. And it's just to her level because she can just use her finger on the phone. You don't need anything special like a stylus or anything like that. You just use your finger. And they have like an erase button. There's a reset button so you can try again and whatnot. Um, it's a lot of fun. And the fact that there's like that timed element and this AI is trying to guess what you're drawing. I think it's just a lot of fun. It's just a nice way to kill a few minutes and play with some art skills and stuff. I, I was able to get eight out of eight most of the time because I'm so good. <laughs> <You're> so good. <laughs> and then the last thing is, um, you know, for you guys out there who, you know, follow the conspiracy theories such as I do that <laughs> Shakespeare, that Shakespeare actually didn't write the plays. There's a whole body of literature, very, very intelligent, smart people. Some of the most famous people, you know, in the last literary two, 300 years, there's a theory that Shakespeare didn't write it all. And, Interesting. He, and he, he either was working with somebody else or it was somebody else. And they just kind of like shuttled all the plays through Shakespeare. Ariel, <laughs> we know that you want to be a, a, a budding, you're, you're a theater person. Oh, uh, yeah. Ariel, what play did you just have Chat GPT write for you? I had it write for me a play for three children based on the ugly duckling, but set in the future. And I wanted it age appropriate for an eight year old. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Chatty wrote me the futuristic fowl with characters of the uh, quark, the ugly duckling, duckling, Nova, the robotic duck, and Luna, a cybernetic swan. <laughs> <laughs> Scene one, the pond in the future. On stage, a pond with shimmering neon water. Quark, a young robot duck with rusted feathers, floats on the pond looking dejected. Nova, a sleek robot duck, enters. Nova, quacking. Quark, why so down in the digital dumps? Quark sighs. I'm just not like the other robot ducks, Nova. They're also shiny and new. While I'm just old and rusty. Okay, it's an entire play that's in six scenes. Yes. And the play is designed for an eight-year-old children, emphasizing the importance of self-acceptance, friendship, while introducing futuristic and robotic elements to engage their imagination. Okay. And why would you need to do this, Era? So the school, I have been asked because I have theater experience if I would run like Not a, just theater a play. Not just theater experience. They heard you were in the theater, so they gave you the keys to the ship. And they were like, hey, you are can, the you, Spielberg. can you just direct this play for the kids? Um, and I'm like, I'm not a director. I'm a stage manager. They're like, we need a stage manager for this play for the kids. So uh, I'm not, I don't even have all the details yet, but I know that I'm going to be doing this. And I was like, well, gosh, do we have a script? They're like, oh, you could just write something. And I... <laughs> I'm not actually a very creative person. Well, you uh, looked at me. Oh, I have a writer in the house. You write it. I looked back at you. I said, no, have chat GPT write right. it. Right. And so I tried this. This was so much fun. So yeah. it, it it would be, it's obviously great to have our kids write their own yeah, plays yeah. and then put them on. Let's be all little women about it. I think that's wonderful. <laughs> but for our really young kids who maybe can't do that or, you know, we're trying to teach a concept or something and the point isn't to write it but maybe to perform or teach a teach a lesson through it mm -hmm. or you know maybe connect it to something in the story let's say we want to write a, a play for two children that's based on uh, ancient persia whatever we're studying yeah, right yeah, now yeah. and you know we could do all these things it wrote an entire play for me and in what, 15 seconds and what's cool so, about <laughs> is if you have a length consideration if you're like hey do this in 250 words or two or three pages worth of text, you know, keep it short, it will go ahead and do that. For right. You. Yeah. And you can say what age do you want it to be for? What um, themes do you want it to emphasize? Uh, how many words you want it to be? You could do something for puppets. I mean, mm -hmm. so just an idea I wanted to give you all because it's something that I've been playing with, like, oh, how could I? And so 
it's funny because they said to me, well, well, how many kids are in it? I said, well, we'll use all the kids that want to be in it. They're like, well, yeah, but you're, how, how many are you going to write it for? And I said, however many it is, because I can just ask ChatGPT. Make me seven characters. Make me seven. Or, hey, I need 14 kids. Uh, five of them are going to be over 10, and the other ones are all going to be younger. I mean, I can give it those parameters, and it can tailor a story for me mm-hmm. that I can use, um, which is just so cool. And I thought, gosh, there's got to be countless applications for this in homeschool mm-hmm. um, or in your local co-op if you want to do something there. This could be great. I also ask it to write me um, a bedtime story about Ooh. two girls in the future who live on a mining ship and go through the galaxy with their parents. <laughs> I thought that you would particularly enjoy this. Oh, that, well, that's, Starry that's Adventures our... with Amelia and Olivia. Aww. Once upon a time in a future where the vast galaxy was their playground, there lived two spirited <laughs> girls named Amelia and Olivia. They, they, along with their loving parents, were the proud crew of the Stellar Miner, a colossal <laughs> mining ship that journeyed through the cosmos. And it tells an entire story about them discovering a new planet and all this stuff, but it's not very long. It's like bedtime story length, That's awesome. which I love. So if you are going to do that, like we went camping and the girls wanted us to tell campfire stories. <laughs> and I don't know if you've ever been like put on the spot. You're like, well, I, I can't think of anything right now yeah, like right. this is and you know they they wanted something that was like slightly spooky but not actually scary we've oftentimes revo- reverted to just telling the plots of movies that they can't <laughs> see yet and just editing out the parts that are not acceptable for them we've told a lot of james cameron movies this way <laughs> around the campfire like so there was this guy and his name was terminator <laughs> and <laughs> they think coming for john Connor, <laughs> and, they, and they think we make up the stories right but we just i i am very bad at doing something on the fly of being creative on the fly i'm hard it's hard for me to be creative normally it's very hard for me to do it quickly so just a couple of fun ideas from chat gpt that we thought you might like uh type those in and see what you get and i'm excited to see what kind of plays and things you put on or let your kids imagination run wild and let them come up with the parameters of their own you know bedtime story or play or you know whatever it is so fun times Thanks so much for joining us today and making us a part of your homeschool journey. Please engage with us on social media. Join our Homeschool Together podcast group on Facebook and find us at Homeschool Together podcast on Instagram. We'd love to hear your feedback, questions, and recommendations. Until next time. Happy homeschooling!